key figure in the German high command, Erich Ludendorff, declared that his armies could not withstand another Somme. Britain had to be tackled another way. Six weeks after the battle ended, Germany resumed the high-risk strategy of unrestricted U-boat warfare, that is sinking neutral shipping. This tipped the balance and brought America into the war. From then on, for Germany, it was simply a matter of how long defeat could be postponed. The effect on the Allied war effort was equally significant. The Somme was where the British army learned how to fight. The British infantry would fight as the French had learned to do. In fact, as my troops did in the Falklands, advancing in lines was out. Instead, they moved in what were called blobs, that is, small groups covering each other as they moved forward in what's known as fire and movement. The army learned to fight what we now call an all-arms battle, with tanks and infantry, gunners and aircraft, all playing an interlocking role. The Somme was a killing ground, but also for the British in particular, a vital training ground. The graves remain as a reminder of what these lessons cost. Could such a thing happen today, with 24-hour news coverage of war, with pictures of thousands of body bags being returned home? Perhaps our concept of what war should be has changed in the last 90 years. But it would be wrong to imagine that the public was kept in the dark about the scale of losses on the Somme. They could see the lists in the newspapers. They could see the hospital trains unloading in public railway stations. They had relatives and friends at the front. They knew what was happening. They understood that this was a necessary war that had to be won, and to win it, there was a price to pay. The cost was enormous. But by 1918, the British Army was the best trained, and I would say, the best led, army in the field. An army forged on the Somme. An army mighty enough to win the war. <laughs>